We've had situations because we monitor Twitter and the Reddit boards. We've had situations where, you know, Redditors have gotten together and said, you know, like, like over the weekend, like this Monday, let's all show up and squeeze Carousel. When you target these stocks as a potential short selling position, like I'm going to, I'm considering a short on this. What is one or several of the things that actually puts that stock on your in your radar, puts it in your sights. What exactly do you see in the beginning that makes you go hold the phone, folks? You know, so the fundamentals are important. Um, and so we want to come up with ideas where we're right about the short. Um, to the extent we can find ideas where we don't think the company is going to be around six or seven years from now, you know, their terminal zeros, uh, those can be a little bit more interesting than just valuation shorts, although we published on valuation shorts in the past. Um, and then we want to we want to have a discussion in the marketplace. And so there are some ideas that um, where the thesis can be a little bit too complex, where we've started moving away from those types of names. So we used to write a decent amount in biotech and healthcare. Uh, if you look at our reports in 2017, 18, 19, you know, we would publish on some of these stocks and I think by and large, we got the arguments right on the vast majority of them. But sometimes the arguments were so complicated that it was hard to change the market's opinion, change sell size opinion. Um, and so, you know, we've stopped doing things in healthcare just because the arguments are too complex. Um, and so we've gravitated towards names where, you know, we think that if we share our research, um, you know, it'll there'll be talk, there'll be discussion um, as a result of it and and people will engage with our reports uh, and and we can impact what people's thinking around these stocks are I know I know a while back Citron uh, had mentioned that they were going to stop I think publishing um, their short letters especially online because they just didn't want to deal I think a lot with the retail uh, like attacks and everything that came after that. You know, how do you see the future of short selling, um, especially with this giant increase in, in retail trading and, you know, it's become very popular to, to trade stocks and, and try to squeeze folks. So how do you see the future of this kind of this game for you? You know, I think the market continues to be healthy for short activists. You know, we published on Tilray a couple of weeks ago. I think we were able to trigger the debate on that on that stock. Um and, you know, we've seen good engagement on most of our reports over the past year. You know, I think other short activists are experiencing sort of similar trends. Um, it depends on the quality uh, of the activists work. And, you know, there's there's a range there. There are some short activists that do better work than others. Um, you know, we try to do we try to be, um, you know, in the top tier there. Um, and I think for the top tier providers, they're having a lot of success. I mean, look at Hindenburg this year, right? I mean, right. Uh, Carl Icahn, a uh, giant company in India, uh, he's getting plenty of traction with his ideas. So I don't know if short activism um, is doing too bad right now. <laughs> um, so, so far, it's promising. Yeah, um, I'm sure that you follow kind of like the GME, AMC, Wall Street bet situation. Um, if there's any apes listening, uh, what would you what would you say? To I them? mean, I don't think the idea of like trying to gang up and squeeze short activists really works. Um, <laughs> we've had situations because we monitor Twitter and the Reddit boards. We've had situations where you know Redditors have gotten together and said, you know, like like over the weekend, like this Monday, let's all show up and squeeze Carousel. <laughs> Monday goes up and like stocks down four percent. Like it just doesn't really work. Right? <laughs> like, you know, like, tell a whole bunch of your buddies, like let's go buy a stock. And squeeze the short activist. You know, short squeezes are definitely a thing. They occur on a regular basis, but who knows? Like what causes them? There's like things in the market inherent in the market structure on that day that causes these squeezes. It's not like a bunch of people getting together and like deciding to squeeze someone. Like I remember the um, the uh, um, Twitter spaces that you know Codes and others used to organize on AMC, like trying to engineer squeezes. And like, 
whenever they do it, like the stock <laughs> go down. <laughs> so, so will you be a uh, spe- uh, uh, will you actually go watch Dumb Money? Or have you seen it already? Uh, what's that? Is that a, is that a, oh, he hasn't even heard of it. new movie? No, I, is that like a new documentary? It's it, well, I it's more of a dramatization of the actual event where you know everybody is represented by a, an actor, and you know there's big people like Seth Rogen who plays one of the fund managers and stuff like that. And so uh, we have a we have a friend of a friend that was. Uh, familiar with uh with roaring kitty and um uh and he said it was actually pretty accurate to what happened on their side of things from what they understand and so yeah it'd be interesting speaking of amc and gme i just wanted to know yeah i'll definitely go watch it when's it when's it coming out it's out right now it just came out yeah, it just came out like last week or something like that yeah no, really? I will yeah. definitely watch it. So of these stocks that you're looking at, for one most one that's most familiar to me is PLTR. And of those particular stocks, you know, we're most of our audience is day traders. These are people that are in and out and don't really pay a lot of attention to the fundamentals, but they can get really sucked into it and that can bias their decisions on whatever their whatever trade they're trying to make. Is there any particular red flags or telltale signs that you would tell a day trader, this is something you should really pay attention to on a particular stock before you start getting uh, a biased position, whether it be long or short? Well, so we're very fundamentally focused um, at the end of the day. You know, every company is worth the present value of its future discounted cash flows, and we go long stocks that you know, where the market price is, is below um, what, you know, DCF would spit out and, and we're short where the stocks are, you know, market caps or enterprise values are higher than what the DCS would spit out. Um, the, my only like real contribution to trading and thinking trading about around trading is just, you know, try to find what consensus thinking is, what's crowded and, if you can take the other side of that, or if you're sort of joining the crowd, you know, think very carefully about whether you agree with the fundamentals. So my, you know, all I can tell anyone on trading is just, you know, don't get sucked into what the crowd is thinking. That'll usually yeah. One of my favorite tools that I've talked about here before is the, um, uh, I don't remember what, what it was. Rob, Robin, Robin tracker. Was that it? Yeah. That it was, was like, uh, it was a popular tool. It was one of my favorite. And this was back, you know, when the hype of, you know, when Tesla in 2018 was running to a thousand for the first time, man, you could hop on Robin, Robin tracker and just whatever, whatever ticker reached the number one, number two position, let it sit there for a day or two. And dude, it would inevitably crash hardcore. And that kind of plays off of that crowd hype uh, mentality that once everybody kind of joins that it dies off, right? Once the hype is dead, it dies really hard. 